next we have uh, Liam uh, from XR Engine. Yeah, Liam, thank you so much for coming uh, to talk about uh, social web XR worlds. It seems like a natural progression from the panel that we just had. So uh, yeah, thank you for approaching and uh, being part of the day. And I will uh, I will leave it to you. Well, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, everybody. Uh, that's been so wonderful so far. Uh, I'm Liam here from XR Engine. Uh, I'm going to talk today about what it takes to actually create immersive social spaces on the web uh, and, and do these wonderful multiplayer virtual places and virtual events. Um, and really how we approach it at XR Engine collaboratively. Um, we really believe, our team, that staying connected matters. And uh, we're an open code collective. Uh, with the goal of accelerating the tools to create an immersive social web. Uh, we believe that's the future. Everybody here who believes in WebXR, uh, I, th I think, feels the same way. The last panel was a great example. And uh, we think that uh, we're not moving fast enough. Uh, and we need better tooling, better open tooling that meets developers where they are um, and can be brought into projects that already exist um, and are being planned. Uh, XR Engine is a composable toolbox of software packages for a complex, large-scale, multiplayer WebXR project. Uh, there are many of these out there. Um, everybody wants to do something bespoke, whether it's a game or a creation tool or a, a, a social event or performance platform. Uh, and we think that they that we together we can find the common tools that we need to make these experiences possible. And these include user experience, front-end tools, UIs, uh, templates, examples that all bridge uh, what an immersive space feels like on the AR and VR devices of our future, as well as the mobile and desktop browsers we have today. Uh, the metaverse web is going to be the next step for commerce and community. This is an example of a project we're working on. Uh, and we really need, believe that the web needs to work together to get to this vision, to build this next place for brands and customers and communities, uh, for, for actual uh, transactions to happen, which is really important to paying for the research and development and pilot projects that are going to bring us to the next frontier uh, and showing, showing the value of what the spatial web is with, with the first projects that are going to happen in the near future. And we want to do that collaboratively, the way that the web demands collaboration on projects like React and Webpack and the W3C. Um, our open collective to build common tools that we can all use to bootstrap the metaverse uh, comes from that, that, that uh, you know, common code. So to tell you a bit about the collective, it was actually started by Laguna Labs, which is a uh, project consulting company that myself and my friends run. Uh, we've had seven Laguna Lab projects on the engine and some of the tools in the toolbox so far. Uh, a few of them have used almost all the tools. Um, and we have code and sponsorship contributions from eight other companies who've come in and collaborated, used our tools, built upon them, contributed back. And that's, uh, you know, just to give you some stats on our main repository, we have over 120 stars. 35 forks on GitHub. Our GitHub repository is XR Foundation, so github.com slash XR Foundation. I forgot to put it in here, but it's easy to remember, uh, XR Foundation on GitHub. Uh, this is what our uh, main example project looks like when it's running. Uh, this is our overlay concept. Uh, it's really uh, a lot of the intersections that we love between Roblox and VR chat. And it shows really what the engine's possible from uh, mo-capped uh, facial recognition avatars on the uh, left to our ability to jump in with VR, um, full IK, full body avatars and motion controllers in this multiplayer world that's uh, designed for content. You can see it's a club. We call it the Black Sun Club, uh, like in Snow Crash. Uh, this is a little preview of some more that we're working on on top of the engine. Um, you know, since we're all developers here, I'll tell you about the packages themselves. So it's a set of packages and tools, mainly packages, uh, that you can find um, 
uh, at XR Engine. Uh, the core packages really are the engine itself, which is a high performance entity component system, which is designed for multiplayer web experiences. I know there's a lot of people here who are looking into entity component systems and they're incredible. Uh, we also have been working with bringing PhysX uh, and three together, um, which are two great uh, uh, real-time gaming technologies. If you think about what these experiences are, they're actually spatial multiplayer simulations that are all synced together. So they we, doing that very efficiently is incredibly important. Uh, we're also building native app wrappers, just like React and I, uh, React Native and Ionic. Uh, we believe that the best native apps are web apps as well, uh, and we'll get into that later. Uh, we've been inspired by uh, game developers to build bots. It was first started as a load testing need, like what Mozilla Hubs does, and now it's become an entire interface for what are soon to become digital beings. We have a team that's working on this who are essentially building digital beings on the web on our framework. We're also very crazy about documentation, help, manuals. Um, uh, every time somebody learns the framework, we want to learn uh, how to how to do that better, how to train better, how to explain better. Um, so. It, it, we're very much about knowledge share. Um, we have a whole set of packages about user experience from the core 2D React components to uh, boilerplate for 3D avatar apps, a fully baked social network experience uh, with the best of YouTube and, and TikTok and Instagram uh, baked into the framework all in 2D mixed with these 3D worlds, uh, an ability to do training and inference uh, in a browser client uh, uh, built into the framework with uh, uh, inference tools, uh, mo you know, computer vision models for uh, face, hands, and body being able to drive characters in the framework. A whole avatar framework based on VRM, which is a very popular upcoming open avatar model uh, 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 standard, and uh, body IK tools built for the web. And, and users of uh, that we play uh, we've we've had play in our our experiences love this they love bringing their knees and elbows hands and feet feeling walking dancing uh deeply emoting uh bringing the body uh the humanoid body into uh, webxr we're very excited to do um we're, we're very much focused on easing content uh, a lot of the problems with the spatial web the 3d web tools is uh, uh content pipelines suck some of the best content is already uh, uh, in game engines like Unity and Unreal. So we're doing a whole bunch of work right now to uh, 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 build Blender tools that uh, better export, not just to GLTFs, but uh, allow for semantic tags for creators to create ground planes, nav meshes, all uh, 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 interactables, uh, level of detail, all these great things um, that they can do directly into the editor that then they can realize uh, in our worlds with, with our engine extensions. Uh, uh, using, using what we built on Blender to get exports out of Unity and Unreal. Um, and through Unreal, we've been playing with Quixel Bridge, which allows us to bring in uh, UDZ uh, and other great formats, which we want to automate to the web, along with GIS, you know, map data, all these other tools. Um, and uh, our avatar tooling, which it really comes to making VRMs easy for every type of, of avatar out there, whether it's Character Creator or Mixamo or anybody else. Uh, we want uh, uh, it really easy to normalize uh, any avatar already made and bring them to the web. And that's really the last step, um, the CDN, which you load up a source asset, it formats it for the web, it creates you know multiple versions of level of detail with retopo and decimation, and then host the, ob uh, the, the object all at once, all as a service. Um, you know, and this is all part of a, a larger suite of game of infrastructure. We have uh, you know, a game server system high, uh, built on WebRTC, a set of microservices, and a whole bunch of fleet operation services to, to host and run those um, servers um, and all, all the complicated hosting on on premises or in the cloud. We built a bunch of backend tools as well that the user never sees. We think these multiplayer worlds are really host and guests, and hosts are usually brands um, or anybody wants to throw an event, and the guests are who actually come to these virtual places and events. And we built a lot of backend tools for hosts, whether that be ticketing, calendars, events, uh, content editors, subscription billing, spot payments. Uh, admin dashboards for for all sorts of moderation 
um, all of these things so you can actually build, build these virtual worlds, run these virtual worlds successfully and build communities. Um, it's deep, it, it starts backwards and forwards with this infrastructure. Um, getting back to an earlier point, uh, we really do believe that uh, uh, some of the best native apps are web apps, uh, uh, whether that be Windows, Mac, iPhone, or Android, and that should be the same for WebXR. The best XR apps should be WebXR apps. And we've invested heavily in Capacitor, um, specifically targeting towards iOS and Android right now to bring in all the best uh, uh, of that, that those mobile operating systems uh, offer to developers that are not available on the web um, and wrap them in our native wrapper so they're accessible to, to web tools, to web developers. Um, and uh, we've been, you know, with Trevor Flowers and many others, uh, uh, really invested in this idea of an interoperative metaverse. The mo open metaverse interopt is, is a really compelling uh, uh, community just starting. And we are extremely interested in figuring out solutions for moving user profiles, avatars, friends, inventories, home worlds, uh, all, all between these uh, connected immersive social spaces. And we believe uh, deeply in data wallets and building common shapes for data. Uh, so uh, we can build the connective tissue uh, to, uh, so that we can all have our own sacred grounds in this, in this digital world. Um, another, another piece I'd, I'd like to, to talk about, which is uh, my team is extremely uh, invested uh, and interested in volumetric video and volumetric capture. Uh, and I bring this up at a WebXR con uh, uh, conference because I think volumetric capture and WebXR are peanut butter and chocolate. They go together amazing. We've created an open universal volumetric framework inside of our collective as, as well. Um, it's actually built for the web. You can see it running in an Oculus Quest. That's me. I look like Penn Jillette in that photo. Uh, yeah, and you can try this out right now. Uh, it's hosted with our partner, uh, uh, Wild Capture, who helped us uh, actually uh, uh, build this framework and uh, uh, cap, uh, collect and process this, this volumetric capture. And uh, we, we really think that this is the next great piece of content to be brought into these uh, immersive experiences. Uh, so if you have uh, any questions, you wanna try it out, you wanna contribute, reach out, go to xrengine.io, goes to our website. Uh, github.com slash XR foundation goes to the code itself. Um, there you'll find documentation and more about us. And, uh, I thank you guys so much for my time, uh, here. And I, uh, and, I, uh, it's xrengine.io. I'm Liam at Laguna labs. I I'm really standing on the shoulders of everybody else who came before me, whether that's you know, Mr. Dube, James by the hubs team and many others. So thank you all so much. And I just want to pay it forward. Uh, you guys are wonderful. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks awesome. So much. Thank you so much. And we have two quick right. questions for you before you take off. Um, I, I know one of them is asking to show some visual examples, and I think this one came in right after you were talking, but um, maybe yeah. you can answer the last one there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, any features connecting across different experiences built with the engine, e.g. friends list, persistent identity? Yes. Um, we've been using these uh, things called Chappy credential wallets. Uh, to sync user profiles. Uh, and we've done that experimentally between different versions of our, of our system uh, running uh, in different Amazon clusters, where there are two entire different multiplayer stacks where people can go together. And it's at very primordial stages. But uh, through the Open Collective, we'd like to do more of that. Um, how lean of a setup can you work, work on with volumetric? Uh, I don't have them out here, but it's a lot of connects. Uh, volumetric is, is a huge, uh, if you want to build volumetric capture, uh, it's a, it's a huge upfront cost, but it's wonderful and it's going to come down. I assume Apple and others will have a lot to say about volumetric very soon. So, um, absolutely. Absolutely. I, think I got two in. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Liam. We really, yeah. really appreciate it. And it was wonderful uh, being here. Uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you so much, Liam. Take care.